Welcome back to the Gloves Are Off Sports Fans. Lance Phillips, JR, Josh Ryan. Politics and Super Bowl, they do not mix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we saw it with Roger Goodell. <laughs> this has been overblown to some extent. This whole Roger Goodell situation has been overblown, but there was some heavy duty awkwardness, not only in the handing of the Vince Lombardi trophy to, to, to Bob Kraft, but in the in yesterday, which is Monday, Monday's MVP trophy handover to Tom Brady, it was incredibly awkward. No handshake. It was really, it was really bizarre. And, and Goodell said to Brady, yeah, come on over here and get your trophy. Almost like, let, let me get the hell out of here so I can, so I can carry on. Is this overblown to you as well? Or, or is this just a case of two guys that really don't like each other. I think it is a little overblown. It's been the biggest story in sports, really, for two years since Deflategate happened. Um, and then you just add in all the political climate we've had with the current presidency there and the issues of coming in, whether or not Lady Gaga was going to make a big political statement or halftime speech. So I think all of it, it's the biggest event of the year, kind of rolls in together. And, uh, yeah, I mean, at least he stayed on the stage they said they shook, they briefly shook hands, they went off. Yeah, it's a little awkward. But seeing that the Patriots didn't like the suspension and uh, Goodell did it anyway when they suspended him for four games for Deflategate, you knew there was going to be something. So, all things considered, I think it was probably about as le less awkward or least awkward as it could be. And uh, they'll, they'll move on. I think, I don't think, I, don't, I think the story will finally start to die down now a little bit. It should. It, it, Pretty, pretty compelling to say the least, though, that they, he suspends Brady for four games to start the season and ends up having to give them the trophy at the end. The fact that they even got to that point is pretty incredible. I mean, with all the great teams that there are in the NFL. But this story has got to go away. It yeah. needs to go away. They're, they're, they're professionals. Goodell, for all his failures, is a professional commissioner. The NFL is the NFL for, for the reason of why he's in that chair. He's the one that makes the NFL the product that it is, just like Gary Bettman makes the NHL the product that it is. He is the one that sells it. They're professionals. <laughs> they, they act like professionals in this situation. Let's get over it. It's so overblown. And you really can, and as much as I've been critical of how Goodell has handled certain situations, the guy really can't win. I mean, he, no. if, he, if he avoids the podium, then everyone goes, what a coward, he avoided the podium. He doesn't avoid the podium and goes up, oh, well, it's too awkward. And the same, I mean, you can say the same thing about Lady Gaga. She makes a political statement at her thing. Everyone, you know, blows a gasket. This is, how can you make this during the Super Bowl? She doesn't make a big political statement. She said lyrics about inclus being right. inclusive and such, but didn't make any grand political statement like some people thought she would. And now people are mad that she didn't make a political statement when she had the platform. So there's really no way you can please everyone with that. That's a great point about, make. about Goodell not being able to win. I mean, he didn't show up for two playoff games in Foxborough, and, and people are crucifying the man because he wasn't there. But he was at other playoff games because the NFL does have other teams that play in the league besides the, uh, the New England Patriots. True. Let's talk about the Lakeland Rustlers. There is a big weekend coming up for Lakeland College. Yes or no? Oh, huge weekend. In, bo in both men's and women's basketball and men's and women's volleyball. A little bit less on the women's volleyball side. Let's touch on basketball first on the women's side. The women are 10 and 10. They currently own that last playoff spot in the ACAC North. But it's not, everything is not copacetic there right now. They are barely hanging on. Yes, just one win ahead of the Augustana Vikings for that fourth seed. A win back of the Huskies now after having split last weekend. Yeah. And uh, this Augustana Vikings team is not as strong as others that have been in the past but it's still a team that can compete hard, play good defense, play energetically, have a good coaching staff. And uh, with the struggles that Lakeland has had, certainly in terms of injuries, players leaving earlier in the season, um, this is a big, big weekend with Augustana. They cannot afford to drop both games. They, at the worst case scenario, they must get a split in order to hang on to this playoff spot. As you said before, men's basketball, they have a couple of wins on the Vikings, so they're kind of comfortably in that third seed. Um, and they're not that worried about dropping too far based at where they are in the season, though they certainly don't want to blow both games. The women, though, it's a bit of desperation time for them. And both, both teams, Augustana 
in the standings are is right behind both men's and women's basketball teams from Lakeland. Yeah. Like the women cannot, they have to split at the bare minimum. And Augustana has two games in hand over Lakeland. Same, same with the Augustana men's team as well. The women cannot afford to be swept here or they're in big trouble. And, and this, this weekend to me, especially for the women is gonna define whether or not they're going to make the postseason. This, this is going to be the definition of, of whether they get there or not. Absolutely. And I'd say the same thing for the men's volleyball team. They currently sit at six, uh, six wins, two wins back of the Grand Prairie Wolves for the fourth seed, one win back of the Augustana Vikings who have seven wins, and they are in the fifth seeded spot after uh, being swept by Concordia last weekend. That was a bad. It was, was a, bad a bad weekend showing. for them. And now, as a result of that, they need to probably win out, at the very least win, uh, one of these matches against the Vikings and then win two the following weekend against Grand Prairie and rely on Grand Prairie, who plays in Edmonton this weekend, to lose one or two games there. So they essentially are in a win or bust situation. I think they're just good enough that they're capable of getting the job done. Last weekend they were without key veteran right side Arnett McKay. Who well, it was, was amazing how, sorry to interrupt you, but it was amazing how much they missed him last weekend. They did indeed, just how calm he is. He's a really, relatively consistent out, uh, right side hitter as well, decent blocker. But as you said, just it's his calm demeanor that just kind of settles the group. You could see them getting very agitated when the refs were making some questionable calls that they didn't like. And uh, th that veteran fifth year leader that Arnett is made a huge difference for them throughout this year, especially with how many injuries they have had so far. And, Missing him was huge last weekend. They're definitely going to rely on him here this weekend to have a chance. After the, after the match, I, I talked to, to coach, head coach Taylor Dyer, and he made a point that there were a lot of mopey people walking around on that court during the game. And, and it, was, it was noticeable that, uh, that um, Concordia's head coach was having them serve to those guys. You made that point as well, that they were serving to those players. And... We saw a couple of guys who didn't play parts of certain sets. Are, are we seeing the point now? And I'm wondering if we're seeing the point where Lakeland is falling off the side of the hill. It could it certainly could be. I think we'll get to see that on Friday night. They are in they are in Augustana. We have the basketball game, games here in town on Friday night. Volleyball will be in Camrose on Friday. And if if they can get through that match, that'll be a real sign of their character because that first match could essentially still make or break their season. And uh, we'll see if the team that showed some promise by beating Nate shows right. up or the mopier team that uh, showed too much of their colors and their body language uh, will show up instead. Arnett's back. Is he going to get the mopey team or is he going to get the solid team? I think we'll find halfway through the first team. I'm not sure. Halfway through the first set, I'm not sure, but we'll see. It's going to be the good one. On the other side, Sidney Crosby, Hall of Famer? Yes or no? What say you? What say you?